We delay the start of tonight's regularly scheduled programs in order that we may bring you the following special report. Here is David Brinkley in New York. Good evening. Today at 4 a.m., Harold Wesley Obnoxious Jr. stopped breathing at the frozen food section of a Southern California all-night supermarket. At age 76, all his fame, all his money, all his fans and all the king's horses couldn't put Harry together again but then he probably would have wanted it that way. Harry began his climb to fame in 1908 as an obnoxious child star, and ever since that first moment when the stage lights hit him, he never failed to bring laughter into the lives of millions of Americans. Some called him disgusting, some called him grotesque, but everyone knew him as obnoxious. And of everyone who knew Harry, this is the way they remember him best. In a scene from That Snow Lady, his most famous and successful film comedy. Yes, Harry Obnoxious was a very funny man. But what about the people who loved him the most? Here's Jane Polly with that story. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Harry Obnoxious left behind a lot of people who truly loved him. Among those are his widowed wife and his lone surviving brother, Jerry. They've just arrived here, and I'm going to try to get some of their thoughts on this gloomy occasion. Mrs. Obnoxious, I, I know you must be taking this hard. But how do you feel now that Harry's gone? He's gone? Where did he go? Ma'am, he's, he's, he's dead. Harry's dead? Oh, I didn't even know I was sick. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh. No, Harry, Harry's gone. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I can't go back to work. My arm hurts. Oh, I'm sad. Oh. Oh, did he leave a will? Oh. Well, there you have it. Oh, the sorrow left behind by the great comedian, Harry Obnoxious. Oh. Back to you, David. Men, you have to hitch up your belt or your pants will fall down. You couldn't help but admire Harry Obnoxious because he was the best at what he did. And what he did was make people laugh. We have in one of our network studios three men who admired Harry because he made them laugh. Three classic film comedies are Duck Soup, Rico Outrageous with the Obnoxious Brothers, and Million Dollars Legs with W.C. Fields. Well, you can imagine I grew up watching Harry uh, in, in my hometown in uh, Nebraska, and uh, well, you can imagine what kind of a thrill it was for me to meet him at the uh, funeral of George S. Kaufman. I remember uh, Harry came up to me and he said, uh, he, he told me he watched my show, which was odd since it was 1961, and my show didn't start until 1969. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Harry, Harry came up to me and he said in that familiar soft voice that I knew first from the TV show and then from the movies, yes. he said, uh, he said, hey, hey, Dick, Dick, Dick. And, and sometimes he reminded me of Jimmy Stewart. Uh, <laughs> I can see that, yeah. He said, he said, hey, Dick, why don't we go out for dinner? We could throw some food on each other. Oh, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> so, so uh, well, we, we walked down the street and headed toward Delmonico's and we walked past the Central Park Zoo. And, uh, well, Harry, Harry walks over to the lion cage at the Central Park Zoo, and, and he gets into the lion cage, and he pulls on the lion's tail. <laughs> Great story. Now, <laughs> well, what's a lion going to do being a lion? Well, the lion bit Harry's leg off. Uh, <laughs> I remember Harry geez. loved it. He just laughed for hours, his bleeding stump of a leg on the floor with the blood and everything. <laughs> I the what a nut. Uh, uh. That was a turning point of sorts for Harry. Uh, Toadie Field started coming over a lot, and, well, it was the beginning of the end. Yes, but, uh, you know, Harry Obnoxious the man was nothing like Harry Obnoxious the star. Mm. He was worse. What? <laughs> he was so bad, he gave Tony Fields nightmares. What? <laughs> Tony Fields, man, no, no, she's a little bit uglier, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously, seriously, though. Um, <laughs> seriously, he'd give you the shirt off his back, <laughs> but he'd rub it into your face instead. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, he was so bad, he could make Ted Kennedy run. <laughs> Has anyone ever called you an idiot? What? 
<laughs> it ain't your mama. <laughs> I loved Harry. I loved Harry, you know. We weren't queers, but uh, I loved him just the same. Oh, let me tell you about Harry as I knew him. I tell you the guy was a corker. <laughs> I'd spend all day making the turkey souffle and he'd stick his face in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, whenever I'd make jello for dessert, he'd take off his shoes and wade through it. <laughs> he did that, he did that a lot. <laughs> yes, I remember that. He, he used to make me make me serve mock apple pie and waffles at all his dinner parties. I ate it often. And, 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 and space food sticks. <laughs> oh, yes. I tell you the nut loved them. Even bought a grow some before they stopped making it. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we get the we get the new microwave oven, right? <laughs> to stick everything he'd get his hands on in that thing. Uh, uh, Twinkies, the cat. <laughs> the cat. Even the cat. tried to stick his wife in there. Oh, I, I bet Margaret loved that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Harry was one heck of a guy. It's too bad he's gone. Yes. Yeah. Too bad.